Mr. Zonker here, and this is Systems of Equations Part 1, Infinity War. Systems of Equations. This is two or more equations that have the same variables, and these are powerful because now we can learn to solve equations that have more than one variable, like we haven't been able to really do before. A solution to a system are the variable values that will make all equations true, not just one of them, all of the equations. Now, systems of equations can have different numbers of solutions, just like we've had with uh, equations with one variable. One solution on a, on a graph would look like the point or the xy values that make both of those equations true. So one solution, and that solution is where those lines intersect. No solution would be like two parallel lines. They have the same slope. They are never going to intersect as far as they go infinitely many solutions, this means you're dealing with exactly the same line, the exact same equations, and if you can't quite see, there's actually two lines directly on top of one another, and these are infinite solutions because every single point they have in common is a different solution. The first method we're going to look at to solve a system is by graphing. It's important because we're looking for the point of intersection to be neat and use the slope to find more than one point. We'll go ahead and graph this first line in red and this second line in blue on the same coordinate plane. So for our first line, y equals 2x minus 1, we have a y-intercept at negative 1, a slope of up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and we can see how we can find multiple points to get a nice, nice straight line. Second line, the blue one, y equals negative x plus 5, y-intercept of 5. Slope is negative 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1, negative 1 over 1. And what we actually have here is this point of intersection is actually going to be our solution. And that looks like the point 2, 3. 2, 3. So if we check this 2, 3, that should, in theory, work for both equations. That would be y equals 3 equals... 2 times 2 minus 1, which is true, and 3 equals negative 2 plus 5, which is also true. Uh, last thing, down here I actually made a table for each of these lines. This is like negative 2, the y value that goes with that is negative 5. All of these are solutions or points on each individual line. And we can actually see that at this point 2, 3, we end up getting that same exact value and that's that's what we would expect based on our point of intersection on these two graphs. The next method we're going to look at is solving by substitution. For substitution you want to isolate any variable in any equation then substitute into another equation, solve to find one of the variables and then substitute that variable that you found into any equation to solve for the other variable or variables if you have more than one missing. Here we go, example one, and this should look familiar. y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals negative x plus 5. It's the same ones we just graphed, uh, but we're going to solve with substitution, and substitution is going to allow us, since we know what y equals, we're going to say, coach, we need a sub. We're going to take that value for y and substitute it into y in the other equation. Uh, sometimes we call this equal values method because we have y equals and y equals already in both equations. If we sub that in, we'll get 2x minus 1 equals negative x plus 5. Trying to solve from there, we can add x to both sides. We can add 1 to both sides. And that's going to simplify us to 3x equals 6. Lastly, divide by 3. And we'll get that same x value that we got when we graphed. x equals 2. What we're going to do from here is take one of those equations... And I'm just going to take the first one, and we're going to use that equation to now find another value. So I've got y equals 2x minus 1, and we're going to take this x value right here, this x value of 2, time for another substitution, coach, and we're going to substitute that in to the x in our other equation. That'll give us y equals 2 times 2 instead of x minus 1. Or uh, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1. A final y value, whoops, final y value. Guess they're connected, that's fine. Uh, final y value of 3. Uh, and 
How we like to put our solution sometimes with these x, y systems is we put them as a point. In this case, our x and our y are 2, 3, that point. Next up, example 2, x equals 2y and 2x minus y equals negative 12. Just like before, we know that x equals 2y, so we're going to call for that substitution of x. If we do that, instead of 2x, we'll have 2 times 2y, substituting that in, minus y equals negative 12. From there, we can do 2 times 2y, which would be 4y minus y, uh, which combining those like terms would give us 3y equals negative 12. Lastly, we could divide by 3 both sides, and we will get y equals negative 4. Just like last time, I'm going to select this top equation here, and we're going to use that, x equals 2y, and substitute in what we found for y, which in this case is negative 4. So we'll take that and put it right in for y. That's going to give us x equals 2 times negative 4 instead of y, which, uh, again, that looks like it wants to stay connected there for some reason. That's okay. x equals negative 8. So our solution, our point, is going to be x, y, or negative 8, negative 4. Last example, here we've got 2x plus y equals 4 and 5x minus 2y equals 10. This one's a little different because I don't have a variable isolated. So first thing I need to do is choose what I want to isolate. When I'm looking at this, it looks like this y is going to be the easiest thing because I don't have to deal with uh, dividing or any fraction. So if I subtract 2x from each side of this equation, I'm going to end up with y equals 4 minus 2x. y equals 4 minus 2x. Now that I have a isolated y, I can take this 4 minus 2x and substitute it in for the y in my next equation. That would give me 5x minus 2, and instead of y, we have that 4 minus 2x subbed in equals 10. If I distribute this negative 2 out, I'm going to get 5x minus 8 plus 4x equals 10, combine like terms, and add that 8 to both sides. So 4x plus 5x is 9x, add 8 to both sides to get 18. Then I can divide by 2, and we'll get our x value of x equals 2. Now when I'm choosing my equation, I could pick one of the original ones, or I could pick the new one that I made right there. I'm actually going to just stick with that new one, because it looks nice and simple. We have y equals 4 minus to x, and instead of x, I'm substituting in that x equals 2, because we know what that value is. Uh, and that's going to give us, oh, they're all in love. Sorry, had to break you guys up there. Uh, there we have y equals 0, which is 4 minus 2 times 2. Uh, so our final answer will be our x value of 2 and our y value of 0. Just like in solving equations with one variable, if you ever want to check your answers, you can substitute them back in, and they must work for both of the equations. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful.